What is the biggest misconception of the nation? <laughs> well, it depends on who you're talking to. There is no misconception of us in the hood among the poor at all. If we go among the prostitutes, they call us the brothers. If we go among the gang members, they say the same, man, that, that go to brothers. Sometimes the biggest uh, misconception is what the enemy has put out. The enemy, because they hate the nation of Islam because of our ability to unify black people. There are groups who benefit from our ignorance. See, what do I mean by that? If I'm ignorant to who I am and I believe that white people have all the power, then if I'm ignorant to the fact that my black manager could have did as much for me as a Jewish manager. See, but if I think the white man's way is stronger than me being with a brother, some of the misconception of many of the people is they will say that the nation killed Malcolm. Our enemy don't like Malcolm, but to keep black people from uniting with us, they put that lie out that the nation of Islam killed Malcolm X. When the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has explained, he said, yes, in our ignorance, we didn't know that there was a COINTELPRO. We didn't know in the 60s and the 50s that we were being infiltrated by FBI agents. It is a well-known documented fact that the FBI was around Malcolm. It was FBI agents who was trying to revive him when he was shot. See, the Nation of Islam, the only thing we did was we helped to create the atmosphere in our ignorance that got Malcolm killed because he turned against his teacher. Millions of us love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It broke our heart when Malcolm started talking against his teacher who never did him no wrong other than when Malcolm spoke against the death of John F. Kennedy when he was told not to. He was only told he couldn't speak in the public anymore. So the enemy, Jewish people, media, who don't like Malcolm, but to keep black people from supporting the nation, they put that out as a misconception. People think or have the misperception that we hate white people. We don't hate white skin, but we know their history. See? But because we will tell them in their face that their history is that of a devil, none of them can say, no, that's a lie. Only a devil will take somebody from their land put him in the hole of a ship, chain us. That's a devil. Take our name, our language, our culture. So in our talking back to our enemy, for, we're not afraid to tell the white man the truth. We speak truth to power and responsibility to the victim. So many people take our passion and love for ourselves as if we hate white people. I will not waste my time. When I first joined the nation, I did hate white people because I'm maturing, but as I mature, I found out white skin is not devil, but I don't let white people get away. They are responsible because of our condition. And I close with this. One white lady said to me, Brother Mohammed, I had nothing to do with your people being in slavery. I said, I know. I said, but the Bible says this, the sins of the father will be visited on their children. I said, but you show enough benefit as a result of what your fathers did. Why don't you help make up for some of the wrong? You took our name, our language, our culture. You stole our gold, our diamond, our oil. Y'all built yourself a great country at our expense. Help us to restore our people. So that's the misconception, brother. There's a misconception because now the media is attacking Islam. That we're terrorists. The black community know the nation of Islam. It's no terrorist. There's a misconception that people think we get entertainers around us to take their money. Brother, they don't have nothing to offer us. All we wanted them to do is to make sure they res use responsible lyrics. There's a misconception that we don't have no fun. See, now, 
We don't drink. We don't have a light. We don't have a death style. We have a lifestyle. See? So that's about it in terms of the misconception. And I'll say the last one spiritually is most black people in their ignorance did not know that the nation of Islam believe in Jesus. In fact, we don't believe that Muhammad is returning in the last day. We know that it's going to be Christ and God. We, too, are waiting on the return of Christ with God. That's a misconception. All 1.1 billion Muslims believe in Jesus. And that's, that, leads, that leads me to my next question because, you know, um, Muslims are highly respected. As you said earlier, mm -hmm. people don't mess with the Muslims. They right. go where they want. People move out there. You know, it's not going to be an issue. Christi Christians... Uh, don't really get the same respect. What do you think is the difference between Christianity, the Christianity respect, and the Muslim respect? Minister Farrakhan said these words to me. He said, brother, when something is natural to you, it's yours. See? What do I mean by natural? He said, when we were slaves, our ancestors used to sing this song, give me my old time religion. That religion that was good enough for my mothers and fathers. We still sing that song in 2017, but when our people were slaves, what religion were they talking about? If you remember the movie Roots, Kunta Kinte was a Muslim. Kunta Kinte used to say a Muslim prayer and if you go back and get the movie for young people who have not seen Roots, you got to go see that movie. White people have never put that back on TV since those days because it ran more black people into the arms of Islam than any other movie that ever came out. And the white man said, oh, my God, we made a mistake doing this movie. And when Kunta Kinte would pray, Fitler used to say, you know that scared white folks? because he was calling on Allah. That's our natural religion. Many of our ancestors who were slaves were Muslims. And this is why Alex Haley proved that Elijah Muhammad was right. He went all the way back to the town of Jufre in Africa, and he came back to America saying Elijah Muhammad was right. My ancestors are Muslim. And Minister Farrakhan built a mosque in the town of Jufre in the name of Alex Haley. Because they know Islam is our natural religion. Because once you are a Muslim, a Muslim will never call another man master. You have to kill him before he call a white man master. This is why the white slave master murdered all the Muslims. Because of the influence that they would have on other slaves. You couldn't break us. It took 64 years to break us. See? He never wanted Islam to return back to the black man. Because once, the, and if you watch us, when the homies watch us, we ain't scared of nothing. We don't back down from no police. Because if we ain't did nothing wrong, we ain't backing down. In fact, we get more respect from white people keeping our foot in their behind than you do trying to get along with them. <laughs> See? That's the power. So when the homies see Islam, it brings out the militant propensity that's innately in the black man and it unites us and that's what the brothers love so when I'm in the, either in the streets of New York Baltimore one thing the homies would say to me say man I'm a Muslim man I know I still smoke right now but brother Muhammad when I get right I'm coming to the nation because they naturally know this is our natural religion man this is the religion that was took from us and I ain't got no beef with Christianity but Jeremiah says, my people is in a far off country. They have given me up the true and living God and taken on another religion and God that has never benefited them. I'm sorry, I love Jesus, but he never taught a religion Christianity. And the white man, if you go back to, uh, what's that movie the brother did about Nat Turner? Oh, um. I wouldn't, Some I wouldn't about a nation. Some, birth, birth of a nation. Birth, birth of, of a nation. nation. Yeah. If you remember, the white man in that movie used Christianity to help make us a slave. Go back and look at that movie. 
And when the first black man would preach, the white man would make sure he was teaching a slavery doctrine. I don't have time to go in that now, but there I can show you the six verses of the Bible that they used to help make us slaves. Jesus would have never went for us being no slave. See? So, but the many Christian preachers who are revolutionary in their teaching, they are not like because the white man made us to worship everything white. Jesus is white, the angels are white. See, the white man made us say, love everybody if a man hit you on the cheek. Turn. That's a slavery teaching, brother. You don't let no man hit you. You get hit, you hit him back. So it's that kind of slavery doctrine. And this generation, this is the Joshua generation. Minister Farrakhan said, but let me tell you something. I don't care how crazy the Bloods and Crips seem to be. I don't care how crazy the artists seem to be. They're the best we've ever produced. Once they get truth, it's over. You're going to see these same ignorant bangers turn into protectors. That's what time it is. That's the only difference, man. The murder rate right now in Chicago is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is in California or New York and these other places that you have visited. Yeah. But do you feel like it's getting so far out of control that you might not be able to pull the brothers back into some unity? Is it too far gone? Look, I believe so much in God. This man who came to get us, Master Fraud Muhammad, my leading teacher, it's going to look bleak. But from them dry bones, you're going to see an exceedingly great, great army. We're going to lose a lot of lives. But at the end of the day, all of us going to turn to God, brother. He's going to use the white man to spank us. Everything Trump do is going to help unify us. So you believe him being in office in, in a weird way is actually helping us to bring each other oh, together? Oh, that's my dude. Leave him alone. He's a wrecking ball. <laughs> He's tearing up white supremacy. Look, Donald Trump is showing us that white supremacy never went nowhere. True. He's pulling off the mass of civility, and he's showing that both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they all tell lies. I'd rather have him than a Hillary. Hillary hates black people, too. She just do it smiling. Trump show you his teeth. See? So... Whether I have a wolf or a fox, they're both in the dog family. What I love about the wolf, he attacks you from the front. A fox put his tail and his nose to the ground and attack you from the rear. So Donald Trump, brother, is good for black revolutionary thinking because he's going to show you that white folks don't love us, never have, and never will respect us. He's also putting in, I'm not, I'm not accurate mm -hmm. on this, so... Uh, don't quote me on this, but I do know he's implementing laws or has implemented laws that's making it easier for police to execute us out here on these streets. What is your advice? I asked Mr. Dyson this yesterday. I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. what is your advice to the brothers when they're getting pulled over? What would be the steps you would tell them to take? So to minimize the chance of something bad happening, what would be the, what would be the steps you would have them take when they're getting pulled over by the police? Here's our training in the nation. If a carload of brothers are in the car, if I'm by myself, you know, you got to show some sense. You can't be emotional. You got to rise above emotion into the thinking of God because you want to live another day to do your enemy. He's now got the advantage. So we teach the FOI that if a brother, if it's two brothers in the front, you pull over. You roll down all your windows. The brothers in the back seat should put their hands on the front seats. The driver keeps it, both his hands on the steering wheel. Brother on the passenger side puts his hands on the dashboard. When the police come, you speak to them respectfully. Officer, have I done something wrong? In fact, you show him you more trained than he is. See, then what you do is you messed him up. He don't know how to handle a cooperating Negro. Because you are cooperating. Why? Because you want to live another day. You don't want to show him how mean you are, how gangster you are. That, hey, that's, see, you show respect. You do everything he asks you as long as it's not against your religion. Need my driver's license? Heal my driver's license, officer. 
Most of the time, brother, a police officer, when we do that, they see we are so trained. I've had a police officer say, have you ever been in the military? I said, oh, yes, sir, I'm a military man. He said, oh, man, here. He don't know I'm talking about. I'm in the military of the nation. He didn't ask me which army. Right, he's asking you the military. So if I'm by myself, I do the same thing. I roll all my windows down. I show this, man, I ain't got nothing to hide. Okay, so with that being said, let's say that I had this discussion with a mm -hmm. colleague of mine, and if you have a weapon in the car, but you're mm -hmm. licensed, you have a weapon in the car, mm -hmm. do you suggest that that brother let the officer know that they have a weapon, kind of like um, Philando did. Yeah. He let him know, but it went bad for him, but do you suggest you inform the police that you do have a weapon in the car, or should you keep quiet to kind of minimize I would minimize say either way, things? either way is okay. Because as long as I got a license, now if he asks me, do you have a weapon? Yes, sir, officer, I have a license to carry. I might not volunteer it because it went bad for Philando. And then that might give him a reason. He may say, stop reaching, and I'm not reaching. Now he shoot me, you see? So I would say either way. If I'm licensed to carry one, I might tell him. Okay. See? But if he asks me, I'll tell him, yes, sir. Well, what I'm trying to do is just get a brother something that they can, okay, Absolutely. that's I'm going to do this. And make, hopefully next time when I get pulled over, it won't, that's right. it won't happen. That's right. Again, that's what I'm saying, either way. Yeah. But you ain't got to be mean-spirited to the police. Man, why the hell are you pulling me? See, right there. <laughs> see, a wise man, see, even if I was upset, I'm never going to lose my cool. I'm never gonna let it be emotional with me and this man because I got a baby. I'm not gonna let him take my life. Now, if I cooperate with him and he wanna hurt me, oh, I'm fighting to the death, brother. I done did everything you asked. See, because in the nation of Islam, we're not sitting on, if he asks us to sit on the ground, we don't do that. We say, officer, I'm a member of the nation. I only bow to Allah. Now, you can take me to the ground, but I'm not going to volunteer lay on the ground. I posted a video on my uh, social media page where um, some gentleman was in a restaurant, got into it with the police officer, and they beat the police officer mm -hmm. up. Do you see that starting to erupt more and more? Do you feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a change of events where police oh. officers are going to start now feeling the heat physically from the citizens of, this, uh, of America because, you know, you've been – Attacking us for so long, it's only so long before people start attacking back. Once again, my leader, teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in a lecture he did in Miami, warned the police. He said, look, it is natural. In the Holy Quran, it says retaliation is a prescription. See? He said, and you're dealing with a generation that ain't scared of nothing. Either you straighten out your act with your rogue cops because it's going to be justice or else we would be justified, see? If a rogue cop kill a brother for no reason and a judge and a DA can't find that man guilty when we saw he was wrong and he gets off, oh no, brother, a day is coming where we will hunt down that officer and kill him ourselves, and be justified in God's eye. May not be justified in yours, but that day gotta stop. Our life have to be worth something, brother. Our life is worth more money than they ever have. The problem in black America, we think that black life is worthless and that's white supremacy because a white man and a mindset of a white supremacist, they devalue the life of people of color. This generation ain't gonna play that, brother. Black men and women, if the police ain't careful, gonna start raising up and killing them, brother. And God says it like this, as you have done, it's gonna be done unto you. You are gonna reap what you've sown. And this is why I say to some, I have some white friends, at least they told me they was friends of mine. I said to them, you all are gonna reap what you have sown. 